So this is my no makeup face and I already prepped my skin but I think skincare is super important. So I washed my face. I actually did a little spa-ish mask um, and I did like an acne treatment and a moisturizer. So it might seem like a lot but it's actually pretty necessary just to have a good slate and so you can get your best makeup. So then I'm going to follow up with the Cover Effects Coming Primer. This is a new product available at Sephora and I really, really like it. It's really lightweight and it feels more moisturizing. It's supposed to be good for sensitive skin, so if you're prone to um, allergic reactions or breakouts in general, this might be something you might be interested in. And um, I really just like it. It's really lightweight, but still makes my makeup last. So I'm taking a small amount. You can see it's one of those kind of cream-based ones, not silicone-based, so really good for just letting your skin breathe. And I'm just going to press it into my skin. Focusing it mostly in the T-zone, but also taking a little along where I get my breakouts the most, which is the sides of my cheeks. To ensure that my eye makeup, um, like my concealer, will work its best, I'm using a little bit of eye cream. I realize that my skin um, under my eyes is really dehydrated, um, so I get a lot of little lines. So if you feel like you get a lot of little lines under your eyes, but you're not exactly old or anything, kind of like me, you might just really have dehydrated under eye skin. So that's what I realized was my problem. So a little bit of Clinique's um, repair wear is what I'm using just to make sure that it's smoothed out and just really moisturized so that my concealer looks better. Now that I have that, I'm taking my Beauty Blender and Hourglass's Veil Fluid Makeup. Um, and this one is in Ivory, which actually seems like a really light color, but I don't know. Their colors are kind of off because this one works for me. Um, and I'm never in ivory. I'm usually like a beige color, so I don't really know what's up with their system. But just keep that in mind if you are thinking about getting one of their products, that they do have like a weird kind of system. So I'm focusing this in the center of my face and then slowly just pouncing the beauty blender <laughs> outwards so I get a little bit of coverage everywhere. And I'm just going to build this up slowly. A little bit on my mustache, around my nose, and I'm also going to go in with a concealer. So this is just to even out my skin tone a bit. And I'm just building that foundation up to where I feel comfortable. Again, just starting with any product in the center of the face and blending outwards for a natural kind of look. You really don't need a lot. It's just about evening out the skin tone and then you can use concealer where you feel like you need it. So a lot of times I feel like people wear too much foundation and I'm sometimes a culprit of that. Now that I feel like my skin is a little bit more evened out and I feel comfortable with that, I'm using a bit of concealer. So this is NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I have mine in Ginger. So I'm just going to take some. I'm going to dab it under my eyes, which is going to be my main focus. I feel like if you focus on making certain areas of your face just really flawless, the other areas don't stand out as much and you don't need as much makeup. So I focus around my eyes and really concealing and perfecting. And then around my chin and where I might have like some acne, it's not going to be as noticeable because people really look at the center of your face and towards your eyes. So I'm putting just the concealer all over. And then I'm taking a concealer brush. This is Sephora's Pro Airbrush Concealer Brush, which I love. And it's kind of a large brush for concealer. But I like it because it really blends out amazingly. All of their airbrush brushes just work an amazing job at blending flawlessly. So you really can't tell that you have that much makeup on, which is awesome. Just blends right into the skin. You can really see a big difference from how my under eyes looked before. I'm going to take a little bit up into my eyelid just because it is a bit discolored. You can see it's really purple and this looks a lot more weak and lively. So I'm just taking the small amount that's kind of left on my brush so that then it doesn't crease up or anything. Like that. 
Recently in New York, um, the Urban Outfitters on 34th Street has Lime Crime, so I picked up this palette, which I've been just looking for reasons to use, um, because it's really gorgeous, um, and I just love these colors, they're just really nice. Um, but as you can see, they're not the most everyday kind of colors, so um, I tend to try to use this white as much as possible, the purple, and then this is a really nice, actually, uh, crease color for an everyday look. So the green and the blue are a little bit more difficult, but today I'm going to be using this white. I'm just dabbing this on my eyelids to open up my eyes a little bit. I'm just going to use my finger. And that way I get a good amount of product all over the lid. And you can see that it just really evens out my skin. Makes the eyes look a little bit more open. Now that we have that white color down, I'm taking a fluffy brush. This one is from um, a Smashbox palette. I'm going to take this orange kind of color. Just a small amount on this domed brush and blend it softly into the crease. Even softly, it seems to have like a lot of pigment. I don't want this look to be so orange, so it's really about blending and taking your time just to make everything soft. This is a transition color, not the main color of my eye look, so I'm just going to blend it. To deepen my eyes and give it that more um, smoky, sultry look, I'm going to be using this color right here from the Urban Decay. What is this called? This is like a version of one of the Vice palettes, of uh, the Dangerous palette. I know that a lot of these colors are available individually and in Vice palettes, so you might want to take a look at your existing Urban Decay palettes to see if you have the same colors. I'm taking this color right here called Deeper on my flatter end of my brush first. I'm just going to focus this on the outer edge. And then I'm taking a blending brush to just blend it inward softly. I'm just bringing my hand back on the brush to make it a lot softer. Just add some depth, which is really pretty. I'm blending this color slightly inward, and then I'm going to apply my darker color. Now, the darker color that I'm using is this one right here. This is called Ace. I'm just going to swatch you these two colors that I just used so you can kind of get an idea. If you don't have these colors, they are pretty unique, but I think still pretty available to get something similar from another palette or eyeshadow that you have. So this one right here is Deeper, which is uh, just warm toasty kind of color it does have a warm kind of undertone um, it's like a coppery kind of tone but as you can see it's really highly pigmented so that in that way it's really um, pretty unique this one right here is ace which is a cool toned silvery kind of color this reminds me of a few NARS eyeshadows where they have that sultry really intensely pigmented look especially the new ones um, but either way, those are the two colors, and this is showing up actually pretty true to color on the camera, so I'm pretty impressed. Um, but if you have anything like that, definitely use it. And just one swatch of the uh, Lime Crime. So Lime Crime, the very warm toned, like I said, it's on the, it's an orange color really. And that one is called Intox, Incantation, Incant, Incant. Incantation. Insantation. I swear to you guys, I was an English major and I have a degree. <laughs> so right here, that color. Pretty true to color, as most slime crime eyeshadows are. So for Ace, I'm doing the same kind of thing. It's a cool toned gray black. I'm gonna focus it on the outer edge and this time just smoke it out but a little less smoked out, I'm not bringing it far in like last time. So just slightly blending it. 
but still concentrating it on the outer part of my eye. Like that. This is a pretty simple look. It's not, you know, super complicated, but it's a nice look to just add to a bold lip because it still has its softness, but it has its edgy points too. Again, it's about symmetry, so take a step back. I'm going to be taking my eyeliner. This is a liquid eyeliner, and I think for a look like this, it's going to be a little bit more dramatic. That's a good way to go. So this is the Urban Decay 24-7. If you're not going to use um, a waterproof kind of liquid eyeliner, I would suggest just a creamy pencil and just kind of smudge it out. That would give a really pretty look, too. So if you don't want to go as bold as a liquid eyeliner, that's a great option. So I'm just going ahead, excuse the mirror, but I need something to see. I'm just lining my eyes, following the natural shape. Because that's so interesting. So I just have my basic line. I'm going to wing it out a little bit. The focus of this look isn't on the eyeliner, it's on the lip. So just a swipe, slight wing. I said swipe. Just to open up my eyes a little bit. Just like that. Really thin line. Really not so complicated. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm using um, Urban Decay's Perversion Mascara, which is really nice at thickening the eyelashes. It doesn't, and I'm going to cut the little baby lashes too. And I feel like that really opens up my eyes a bit. I tend to like to wait a bit before returning to my complexion, just so everything kind of settles. So now I'm going in with a brush, just like a, one of these foundation brushes, and patting in my powder. So you can go with a fluffier brush, but I'm just focusing where I need the most oil control. It's in the T-zone. And a little bit outwards. But again, the center of the face is where you're going to really want to focus. And I like this brush because under the eyes it really gets into those little areas. Little nooks and crannies. I don't really need to sweep so much, you can just kind of pat it where you need it. Like that. Typically, less is more, but with a look like this, I'm going to really go heavy with the lipstick because this is the focus of our whole tutorial. So I'm using um, Prestige's Waterproof Lip Liner. I really just love waterproof products because otherwise they're not going to last. So this one's just a really pretty mauvey, berry, plummy, you know, color. It's like 15E name, so this one is called Wine, oh, or Winey, Wine wine Color. There you go. It's not, it's not plum, it's a wine color. So this one's really gorgeous. It's going to last all day. I've used this a million times, and I love it. Prestige, so it's pretty inexpensive, available at Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, all those kinds of places. I'm just going to lightly define my lips. So I'm starting at the bottom. a small amount on my brush. Lord knows all you need is a small amount. So just a little bit on a MAC 217 brush I believe this is. It's actually an eyeliner brush but whatever girl use what you have. And I'm going to paint this onto my lips. 